Hello, my lovely blush tube friends. What to tell you? Really? Um, as you can see, we are going to be stitching on, or I'm going to be stitching on my Peacock's Lagoon uh, Heaven and Earth design on this occasion, but you don't know that because this is the first video and only video you're going to see because I've already stitched a Stitch With Me video three times and you haven't seen any of them. So that's how well this first Stitch With Me video has actually gone for me. <laughs> it's been painful, let's just put it like that. I will tell you the story whilst I stitch. So sit back, relax, grab yourself a beverage of your choice and your stitching and let's have a little chat. So, as you can see, here we are, again, well, again for me, and not for you. This is just me doing it again, because I've been trying to get you this video since Sunday, would you believe? Sunday. Yep. It's been an absolute nightmare to do this video. And not for all the right reasons. <laughs> so, I decided that given that there were so many comments when I said, do you want me to do a stitch with me? There were so many people that basically said, could you do a stitch with me on your Chatelaine? I was like, yeah, sure, I can do that. You know, I can stitch, you know, specialty stitches and and chat and, you know, keep track of where I was at and, yeah, no, that wasn't as straightforward or as easy as it sounded. So needless to say, all day Sunday, pretty much all day Sunday, I spent setting stuff up, trying to stitch and recording it as well as, obviously, them realising how complicated it was to sit and talk about something completely different whilst I'm stitching things like Algerian eyelets. So I was like, yeah, no, that's not very easy. But I did it, but it just took such a long time. So I think I was doing it for, well, I think I got up and started, started recording at sort of like nine o'clock in the morning. I don't actually think I finished until, well, must have been gone lunchtime, I reckon. One, one, two, three. Yeah, it must have been gone lunchtime. So, as you can imagine, by the time I actually finished recording it, I was like, wow, that was, uh, that was harder than it looked. But I was like, no, we've done it, so that's fine. Which was the coming plan. That was what you wanted to see, so that was what I produced. What you don't know is that back over a week, 10 days ago, me and my daughter was chatting because, you know, we was talking about me uploading videos and the fact that I was getting so frustrated because it was just taking so long and most of the time it would crash and obviously for those of you that know my daughter has her own YouTube channel and she's got this all singing all dancing gaming computer so I sort of said to her I said it's a nightmare and she knows that because many a time I've tried to upload my video because the way I've always done it rather than upload directly to YouTube because it tended to crash quite frequently that way I used to save my files first and then try and upload and I found that it stopped it from crashing so much however it was much more time consuming to do it that way where am I going one two park him over here um it was much more time consuming doing it that way. 
So then obviously the whole crashing thing and the computer was getting slower and slower and I was just like, this is just dreadful. So in the end, I'd sort of resorted to doing the video, editing the video using my iMovie and then passing the file or the passing a stick with the file on to my daughter for her to actually get it uploaded onto YouTube for me because obviously she had this all singing or dancing computer. So she turned around and said to me, Mum, you know, I keep telling you this. She said, if you're going to keep doing videos, you really do need a computer, she said, that's got some guts. And she said, and you really do need a computer that is a Windows computer and not a Mac. So I was like, yeah, but I love Mac. And she's like, yeah, but they're not very good for these sorts of things. She said, you're much better to go and get a Windows computer. So needless to say, I bit the bullet and decided, that's it, I'm going to buy a new computer. So I let her get me this specialised speci specialised computer that was like sort of built, specified for what I needed it for. And that arrived about a week ago. So I've had a little bit of time to play with this computer as far as, as a bog stand computer. The only snag with it is... I've always used iMovie for my videos. Now bearing in mind I've been videoing YouTube videos now for, this is four years, four years this month I've been on FlossTube and I've always used iMovie because iMovie comes on the Mac and obviously I've always used a Mac. So obviously when I've switched over to this new Windows 10 computer I can't use iMovie because iMovie software doesn't run on a Windows computer. So Lauren's like, well that's not a problem mum because you can use Sony Vegas, Sony Vegas Pro. She said it's an editing software, it looks all complicated, she said, but it's like super cool, it's got so many more features than yours has got um, and you'll be fine. So I was like, oh, alright then, thinking yeah, you know, she uses it so it must be cool and I, you know, I, I can use it. Needless to say, it's a minefield, people. You know, when you, you, I've, been, I've been doing videos for so long with the editing software that I could do it pretty quickly. And then all of a sudden, I've got this Sony Vegas. And I'm like, wow. Oh, wow. That's, there's a lot of stuff on there. So, throughout the week, I've been watching loads of YouTube videos, as you do. I mean, I've basically learned how to use... Sony Vegas Pro the same way that I learned to stitch so I basically just pull up YouTube videos watch how it's done and just keep watching so I was like yeah okay this is doable we can do this and obviously that's sort of what's been happening so on Sunday when I decided I was going to do my video so I'm just marking my chart sorry Okay, we've got another thread. So yeah, so basically I've been learning, or say learning, I've been familiarising myself with this Sony Vegas, Sony Vegas Pro. So I thought I was pretty much on the ball, I knew exactly what I needed to do, I thought it was all going to be fine. So on Sunday, obviously I've spent almost half a day just trying to record the video, because... I was doing it on my Chatelaine. And I was struggling with the whole, what do I say? You know, what do I say to you all? So I printed off some um, tag questions. So I think I printed off the uh, Stitches in Sound by Carl, his tag questions. And I was, you know, quite happily answering his questions and trying to do my specialty threads at the same time, which was much more difficult than it appeared so I've done all this and then obviously I've put it I've got the stick out the camera and uploaded it well imported it into Sony Vegas now when I was using the iMovie basically the minute you actually put the videos into it and you start playing with stuff it's on there so it doesn't matter what you do 
you know, if you shut the, the application down and then restart it, it all comes flooding back to you. So anyway, I've done all the editing and that's took its own, well I was going to say, so I'd done the videoing by lunchtime. By the time I'd finished the editing on this new software, on this Sony Vegas Pro, it must have been about, I don't know, half three, four o'clock. So my daughter was out, so I texted her and said, okay, I've done this, I've done this video, but I said, I'm pretty sure you said to me, whatever you do, don't render a video until I'm around because I need to change the settings. She's like, yeah, that's right. She said, so I said, so I said, seems as I've already done this, I said, and it's all ready to go. I said, if I save this, I said, and then I wanted to start recording something else. I said, can I do that on the video, you know, and then upload another one and work on that and then render. She was like, yeah, as long as you save as. So I've done exactly as she said, and I've saved. Now, because I work from an actual camera rather than my phone or, or anything like that, you have to use a stick. And what I tend to do is each time I record something, I leave it all on the stick until I'm ready to record something else. And then I delete all of the footage off of the stick to do the new video. So kiss, I've saved my project on the computer pulled the stick, cleared the stick, deleted everything from the stick <laughs> and started recording something else because I thought well I've got a bit of spare time, I've got to wait for Lauren so I might as well make use of my time so I started recording something else <coughs> then eventually Lauren's come home by this time it's like half five, six o'clock at night so I'm like well, I've still got a chance to actually get this video uploaded on Sunday so that at least it's done so Lauren turned around and said okay mum come on pull this video up and she said and let's get it rendered and we'll sort the settings out so we've opened Sony Vegas and then tried to open the files now when initially it all sort of come up it all looked fine so I was like oh that's okay we're good it's all there and then she said well let's just quickly run through and just have a quick look at the video so as I've sort of hit the play button nothing happened then all of a sudden all of my editing stuff like you know my little you know the little pop-up boxes and the little pop-up stuff that you normally see all that started popping up but no video footage so I said Lauren what's happened where's the videos and she's like mum where are the videos I'm like I don't know I said she was like, you did save them. So I said, yeah, of course I saved them. I said, you said, do the editing. I said, save as. I said, and I've done that. I said, you can see that I've done that. So she turned around and she was like, oh no. So I was like, what? She went, mum, she said, you did actually save the files, like the, the movie files that you've made on the computer. You did actually save those to the computer first and then done your editing, she said, and then saved that. So I was like, what? No, why would I do that? I said, I don't have to do that with iMovie. I said, so then obviously she sort of said, oh, mum, she said, she said, you can't, she said, the only thing Sony Vegas actually saves is your editing side of stuff. She said, the files have to be on the computer to be able to, to sort of pop up onto the editing. She said, it's only when you render the, the, the file that they're actually saved as a movie. So she said, go and get the stick. She said, and we'll have to put the videos back on. Well, cuz my eyes nearly fell out of my head when she said that. Because I was like, what do you mean? I said, what, you mean all the footage of me stitching? I said, isn't there? And she was like, well, no. She said, because you didn't save it to the computer. So she said, just go and get the stick, Mum. She said, it's okay. She said, get the stick. She said, and we'll just re-up. She said, we'll just save the, the media files onto the computer. And at that point, I was ready to cry. And she's like, Mum, what's the matter? She said, it's no biggie. It's, you know, she's sort of like, no, Mum, it's fine. It's, you know, it's no problem. And I was like, you don't understand. And she's like, what? And I was like, I deleted the files. So because then she's looked at me and she went, well, what did you do that for? So I said, well, because you said, if I save it, it's saved. 
I said, and I, I said, oh, rather than sit here waiting for you to come home, I said, I thought, well, I'll make good use of my time. And whilst you're out at work, and I'm waiting for you to come and sort this out, I said, I would start recording another video so that I had another video in the wings that I could be editing until you get back. So at that point, I was sort of devastated. I'd basically wasted a whole day of my life. So for a whole day, there I was, thinking that there I was thinking that you know I was all proficient and I had my movie all ready to go type of thing, only to find that everything that I'd done was gone, all barring a load of editing, which is no good when there's actually no video footage to show you. So. Upset doesn't even cut it. I had to step away. I was so annoyed because I was like, what a waste of my life. I've just spent a whole day, a whole Sunday, which, I don't know about you guys, I don't, I don't have much free time. So to, to lose a whole Sunday messing around on this computer and doing all this stuff, only to find that at the end of the day, the whole thing is gone. So I was like, oh no. And she's like, well, you know, it's a learning experience, Mum, you know, you know the whole, you know, what you teach your children, do, you know, don't get upset, don't see it as a waste of time, see it as a learning experience, you know that one? You know, you know that whole, let's play the learning experience card? Well, my own daughter tried to play that on me. As you can imagine, I was just like, no, that's not working. That's just so not working. I'm not having any of that. So, yeah, I was not very happy to say the least. So anyway, I accepted defeat and was just like, oh. So then I was working from, well, I'm working from home um, for a few days this week. So on Monday when I got up, I thought, okay, it's very early. I don't start, I don't officially start work until nine o'clock, although I'm always online by eight even when I work from home. So I thought, well, okay, I will get up early as I always do, and instead of doing housework and those exciting things, I will retry doing the video again. Now, obviously the learning experience was I really struggled to stitch and talk on my Chatelaine because I was doing specialty stitches. So I thought, well, I'm not going to try that again. Not when I'm up against the clock type of thing. So I thought, well, I'll, I'll pick something different. So I pulled out this one. And believe it or not, we stitched all of this over here. Most of this over here wasn't stitched yes, until yesterday. But I was like, I don't want to have to try and drag it all out and set the camera up in a certain position and do all these bits and pieces. And Lauren's got this all singing, all dancing webcam. So I was like, well, maybe I can do it off the webcam. And I'd do it that way. So I dragged everything into the office. And I thought that way I can record straight to the computer so it doesn't have to go via the stick. It doesn't, it doesn't require the normal setup. So I thought I'll do that. So anyway, there I am yesterday morning messing around with this webcam, trying to get it to, to do what I wanted it to do. And on face value, at first, it was like, this looks good. This could actually be a new, quick video way forwards. So I've spent another hour, yesterday morning, doing another video for you. And waffling the iron legs off a donkey. And then thought, on my lunch, I'll edit it and get it uploaded whilst I'm working from home. Needless to say, when I've gone back and looked at the files and put them into Sony Vegas, the camera section of it's not too bad. To be honest, I was reasonably surprised because it's a very good webcam. I think the webcam was about £60. Um, oh, trees are count. So, yeah, the webcam was about £60, so I thought, well, that's not, you know, it can't be a really bad 
webcam. So to actually see what I was doing, it was actually pretty good. But the audio was absolutely diabolical. So again, there's another hour of my life wasted because the audio from it just wasn't clear. Well, it just obviously because a webcam, you've got the you've got the microphones at the front of a webcam, but obviously I had the front of the webcam face down onto my work. So all you can hear is me muffling. Oh, it sounds muffly to me. Hold on, I'm counting. One, two, three. Okay. So yeah, so it was a bit too muffly for my liking. So again, I decided I'm not uploading that because the quality was not, it wasn't as nice as I would have liked it. I mean, hey, <laughs> who knows? The quality of this one could be disastrous as well, the way I'm going. So, I sat there, I played with it, I edited it, I did all that stuff yesterday, and then in the end I, was, I just decided last night, do you know what, I'm not going to I'm not putting that up on my, on my channel. I'm not going to do it because I'm, I'm not happy with it. So, needless to say, here we are on... Where are we? Mm -hmm. There we go. Tuesday the 19th. Of February I'm going at it again so third time lucky do you think do you think this is the time that you actually get to see it gotta hope so can't imagine doing this all over again okay count are one two three that's number four one two three four okay so yeah so there you go people, you have no idea the pain I've had to suffer <laughs> in just trying to get a Stitch With Me video sorted. Oh, don't get me wrong, I'm sure that this is just because it's something new. It's the same as when I was first doing my videos. When I first used to do my videos, the amount of takes and the amount of different bits and pieces that I had to do and the editing just took me forever totally forever and then all of a sudden once I got into the swing of it and I knew what my setup was and I knew how I needed to do things and then it was fine but I think this is going to be one of those things where it's just going to take me a little bit of time to to work out what I'm doing because yeah it's a little bit more tricky than it appears but for me, I think the hardest thing is the whole talking and stitching. I just, it's not that I can't do it. It's just that I either lose where I am in my stitching or I lose my train of thought. I can't work out which one it is. <laughs> Hold on, I've just got to mark my chart so we don't get lost here. And then obviously at first I was thinking, well, the other thing is my life is really not that exciting. It's really not. So then it's the whole, well, what do you talk about? You know, it's a bit different when I'm sitting here talking to you about my actual stitching. And you know, what I've done and showing you stuff and what my thoughts are. That's one, that's one thing. But to actually sit and stitch and not talk about my stitching that I'm stitching on. Or sort of talk, talk through what I'm actually doing. The whole sitting and sort of chatting while stitching is actually a lot more difficult than it looks. Maybe it's because when I'm at home and I'm stitching, in general, I'm not talking. So maybe I need to practice talking. Although, I think the other thing is obviously when you're sitting here doing this, it's, you've got to remember, you're sitting at the end of this camera, or at the, at the end of the TV or the iPad, listening to me waffling on and rambling about a load of nothingness um, but for you it's like you know that it's a person talking to you but for me whilst I'm sitting here recording this I'm basically talking to myself is what I'm doing 
So maybe I need to practice more of walking around the house just genuinely talking to myself and it will just fall into place. <laughs> because it's really difficult to think of what I'm going to tell you or what to say when I actually feel like I'm sitting here talking to myself. Which is fine. It's just not something I normally do. Yeah, it's a bit different when I'm, you know, I'm holding something up and I'm showing you something that I've stitched on and I'm telling you something about that stitching because that's that's like me telling you something about something that I'm focusing and concentrating on at the time. But to just sit here and talk about stuff, stuff that's happened, is a lot more difficult than it looks. Well, it is for me anyway at the moment. I'm sure it'll get easier. <laughs> Hope it gets easier. <laughs> right, where are we? As you can see, there's lots of threads over here on this, on this side with little towels on. The only reason that's there is so that I don't have to turn my work while I'm talking to you. Under normal circumstances, I would always end my threads on the back. But I haven't done that. Because... Why haven't I done that? See what I mean? Total chain of thought lost there. Um, I haven't done that because I thought by the time I keep flipping my work over and it's just going to sort of, you know, everything, you know, you don't want to see what's all underneath here. So I thought, well, if I do that, but now it's sort of a bit of a mess now, more so than normal, but that's fine. Right, I need to pull some more thread. Okay, don't I? Yeah, pulling more thread. So yeah, so there you go. All exciting stuff on a Tuesday morning before eight o'clock. <laughs> Must admit, it's quite therapeutic getting up and just doing a spot of stitching before I do anything. I've had a cup of coffee. That's about it. So. So just as a heads up people, my videos, the editing might be slightly different going forwards now because of this new I'm um, new editing software, this Sony Vegas Pro. Don't get me wrong, it's a very good software to use. It's, you know, a big professional one, but there's so much on it. I mean, half of the stuff that's on it, I'm not going to ever use anyway. It's very unlikely anyway. So it's one of those things that I think I just need to find out or work out the bits that I need to know and that's it. And the rest of it, you know, I'll just I just won't use, but yeah, it's harder than it looks. Three, four, I've got to count, sorry. Two, three, four, five, six, okay, seven. So as you can see on this particular piece that I'm stitching on, on my Peacock's Lagoon, this one I'm stitching on 25 count, two over one. And I have to be honest, I've started my mini Red Queen Red Dragon on the 28 count and I'm doing that one two over one tenth stitch as well. And I prefer the coverage on that one than I do on this one, but this one is so much easier to stitch. And I know that at the moment I'm just working on lots of block colour, so I'm, I'm not eluding myself by any stretch of the imagination that it won't get a little bit more tricky when I start heading into lots of colour changes. But at the moment this is just stitching up so quick. So, so quick. It's one of those easy to stitch projects, hence the reason why I thought I'd do it on this video, to try and make things a little easier on myself. That was the idea anyway. Yeah. 
ways. See? See how terrible I am? Oh, yes, I do want to park, don't I? I want to park it under there. I don't want to park it. There. See, struggling to talk. Or to think of things to talk about whilst I'm stitching. Maybe I should pick a question and... Maybe I should sit here and just stitch in comfortable silence with you. How do you fancy that? So that I don't have to talk. I can just, I can just sit and stitch more. Because maybe it's just a bit too early to be sitting here trying to stitch and talk and think all at the same time. Before 8 o'clock, only, only one cup of coffee. That might be the reason. That it's just that I've only had one cup of coffee <laughs> and I need more coffee. some comfortable silence. <laughs> Along with the dog snoring, because that's what he does love him.
to disappear soon, people. So I still need to get myself ready for work. Although I'm not actually going into work. I'm working from home. My boss is on leave. Because it's half term. And so he's gone on leave, which does make life a little easier for me. And I get to stay at home because he's not in the office, which is heavenly. It's so nice to be able to get up, have some time in the morning, you know, do some of my chores and do some of the things I've got to do. And then literally just pop into the office and shut the door and that's me at work. I could definitely be a work from home person. You know, a home, a home based worker. Without a problem. I know that some people can't because they, they either struggle to self motivate or stay stay focused on what they're doing they find it too easy to sort of you know get distracted by stuff that they want to do at home so they don't actually get as much work done me on the other hand I seem to be opposite to that so I tend to find when I'm at home I'm actually more focused but then I have an office so when I come into the office and start work, for me, that's like I shut the door and it's like I'm in the office. I think for people that work from home and, you know, sit in their living room with a laptop with a TV on and, you know, in, in the hustle and bustle of the, the normal house, I think, yeah, I think it would be easy to get easily distracted from what you're actually doing. But I think when you've got an office or you've got a space that you actually go to, to work, you're much more focused, well I am. I get so much more work done when I work from home because I don't get distracted and I don't get people interrupting me and because I'm not available to them straight away they tend to leave you alone for a little bit. Because obviously you're not there right in front of them they don't tend to feel the need to come and talk to you or yeah, it's a lot easier that way. Okay, I think we'll finish this square and then I'm going to have to call it a day because it's, it's just gone 8 o'clock in the morning and I have work to do and I've got a doggy to feed because he hasn't had his breakfast yet. He's a bit of a late riser, is my fudge. When he's awake, he has his heart medication when he first wakes up. And then you have to wait an hour. Because he's not allowed to eat anything for an hour after he's had his heart meds. So he has his heart meds. And then he goes back to sleep, because that's what he does. He does a lot of sleeping these days. You know, when you sort of think he'll be 10 this year, love him. And he's a bit of an old man. So he does a lot of sleeping, a lot of snoring. He's not, he's not as active or as crazy as he used to be now. He's definitely calmed down with old age. But then don't we all? I don't think I'm anywhere near what I used to be when I was younger. I don't think I could maintain it now. I don't think I've got the, the stamina levels. He still loves a walk, so he goes out for his little walks with, with Daddy. So Daddy's like the dog walker. He takes him out. And I'm more the let's play ball in the garden type of gal but then the only reason for that and this is like this is like a secret I don't think I've ever told anyone this well certainly not on floss tube is that I'm actually frightened of dogs <laughs> so and when I say frightened of dogs I mean like petrified like total fear of other dogs Um, so as a child, mm. I got bitten about, mm, I think 
four or five times. And every time I got bitten, because my mum obviously was brought up with dogs, you know, and my brother was never scared of dogs, it was just me. And they kept saying to me, the only reason you keep getting bitten is because you're frightened and the dog can sense that you're frightened, so they're biting you. So I was like, well, I can't help that. It's a bit like saying, don't be frightened of spiders, you know. You might not want to be frightened of a spider, but you are, and there's no way around it. And that's sort of how it is with me and dogs. So the thing is, is my fear of dogs was well, like, terrible. And at the time, we had quite a few, not stray dogs, but dogs that basically escaped from their gardens and would just go roaming the streets. So you had like little street roaming dogs. And, you know, if they come anywhere near me, I would either run a mile, get bitten because I ran, or stand still, because my mum always said to me, make sure you stand still, don't look them in the eye and just stand very still. Don't be a threat, but don't, don't run away. I tried that and I still got bitten. I mean, how does that work? So yeah, so in the end I decided that, you know, that went on all through my childhood, into adulthood. And then I decided I'd get my own dogs, because I was like, well, maybe that will help me get over the fear of dogs. Which, you'd think it would, wouldn't you, really? The only thing it made was that I didn't fear my own dogs. I've never feared my dogs. But I'm still frightened of other people's dogs. I mean, I even... I mean, we used to go to um, puppy training and agility. We did that up until Chester was about six, six or seven, because it was when I got Fudge. Fudge went to puppy classes as well. Um, but Chester was well into the agility. He loved all that. He loved all that stuff. Um, and again, I was fine apart from when other people's dogs come near me. So I don't get it. And then what made it worse is, at this point it's like, well, all right, my fear wasn't quite as bad, but I was still frightened. But now I was more frightened for my dogs than I was for myself. Because the one thing that you don't realize when you, you know, you go and buy a dog, and, is that if you take it out for a walk and you go anywhere where there's other dogs, your dog attracts more dogs because all the dogs want to come over and see your dog which was a total nightmare so needless to say because we still have dogs every now and then that you know get out of people's gardens and are just roaming up and down the road which is you know rare it doesn't happen very often but it always tends to happen on the days that I've gone out and took the dogs for a walk and obviously I'm petrified of what they'll do Especially since there's some dogs just genuinely don't like other dogs. And at the time, I mean, I don't know whether it, I rubbed off on Chester. I don't think it was. He was just a bit of a miserable old dog anyway. Um, but Chester never liked other dogs. Ever. So if there was ever another dog, Chester would always growl at them. Which is sort of like, almost confrontational. So needless to say, I refused to take the dogs out for a walk because it always seems to attract more dogs. So Darren is the dog walker, where he goes out and about with the dog. I mean, if I do take the dog for a walk, I mean, it's not to say I don't take my dog for a walk, I do, but <laughs> I drive him to the local, the local shopping centre or precinct, which is basically where no one takes dogs because it's like a retail park. And I walk my dog around the retail park. <laughs> He loves window shopping. He really does. I mean, I know he's not allowed in the shops, but he does love the window shopping aspect of it. Always that, you know. And he loves all the people. So, so yeah. So, But I don't walk the streets. I don't sort of take the dog for a walk along the road or close to home because there's so many other people that have got dogs. Some of them actually walk their dogs off leads, which is fine for the ones that are, you know, where their dogs are under control. But that makes me really nervous anyway. If I see a dog that's not on a lead, then I panic straight away. There's no, you know, there's no sensibility there. I just, I'm like, oh my God, this dog, it's, it's a soft lead, soft lead. You've never seen anything like it. I pick my dog up and run now. That's what I do, which is probably the worst thing I could do. But my fear is as such that it's just get me out of this situation.
I'm terrible. <laughs> I think I probably need some sort of like hypnotherapy to get over it because it is like a completely rational fear. But now I fear, well, if that dog comes over and attacks my dog, what would I do? Whereas before it was, if that dog comes over and attacks me, what would I do? So yeah, I've just switched one lot of problems, like one, one fear of a, of a dog off lead to another. But yeah, not... Um, but hence the reason that I don't walk my dog. My husband walks the dog. I just play ball in the garden. I'm the ball girl. My fudge loves playing ball, so that's great. Although they love him. He plays ball for like 10 minutes in the garden and then he sleeps for like 6 hours straight, so... He's not as fit as he was. Okay, I think that will do us for today. Let's get rid of... Oh, I forgot that one, didn't I? Let's do that one. Before we go. Did you just get a whole view of my face then? I do hope not. There we go. And there's a bit more done. It's coming along lovely, look. Let me see if I, shall I zoom you out a little bit? Let me see if I can zoom you out so you can see. There you go. Get rid of all that mess over there. I will go and take all these ended threads out. But I'll just stitch over parts of it and then, then pull them out. But it's coming along so, so well. I'm so, so pleased with this piece. See? There you go. Right, on that note, people, I do hope that I actually get to upload this Stitch With Me video for you. And that this isn't a third stroke, fourth time. No, you need to redo it. So, fingers crossed the quality of this video will be fine. And the quality of the audio will be fine. The editing will go fine. And you will actually see this one. And if this has worked, then maybe we will do it again very soon. So until next time, people, bye-bye for now.